I don't know if you've ever, have you ever heard of a trophic cascade? No idea. It's this new like uh, understanding in the natural sciences, particularly around an animal, um, the American, well, the Canadian gray wolf, the gray wolf in America, which we ridded out of the United States yeah. because it was destroying our cattle. It'd just be eating all of our, one of our largest exports. So we, we would shoot them dead and we haven't had them here for a very long time. A few years ago, it got reintroduced right before that motorcycle trip I took. And um, essentially what happened is all of the the deer, the elk that were hanging around the riverbanks were so used to not having a predator. Mm. They were completely confused when they saw this carnivorous wolf like around <laughs> the corner. And so they started to die off, right? Okay, totally natural. So what happened? All of a sudden on the riverbanks, reeds started growing, mm. tripling in population so that fish eggs could be laid in the reeds. So now fish started tripling, then fowl, large water birds were starting to become more aware of fish. So beaver became more prominent. They built more dams. They created more wetlands. So you're seeing like a 10 X on multiple different, like, uh, you know, animals, plants, things like that, that created what is called a trophic cascade, wow. which is one single thing affecting many. Hmm. In my opinion, the philosophies that we're bringing up today could be a trophic cascade into the things that we need to do. The structures of understanding, the structures of meaning, and the emphasis on the power of things that you cannot hold all draw people into a sense of goodness. But here's my question for you. Do you see one trophic cascade going on today that's leading us in a positive direction? Like, Can you name one? Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's not good. I, yeah, right? This is taking way too long. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is, you know, this is, and this is just gut feeling right now, mm -hmm. is I think that most people are starting to realize that something is wrong, but they, they can't articulate it. And they can't, you can't really fix something that you can't articulate, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's uh, I think of like a teenager who's angry at his father, but he doesn't know that he's angry at his father. So he's just really, really, really angry. And I think that's where we're at right now. And it's good that we're starting to get angry and we're starting to get like upset at our lives. I think, right. I think, I think the first step is, I always say the start of any great change is suffering. <laughs> And I think that it's probably true. Yeah. And I think that for a long time, this new technology was just we were we were just seeing the blessing of it and just getting carried away and how wonderful it is. And now we're starting to suffer from it. And mm. again, I'm not a sadist and, and want people to just unnecessarily suffer. But I think the first stage is suffering. People are lonely. They're on antidepressants and doing all sorts of other things to try and cope. And I'm hoping, and I'm hoping this this very negative thing turns to a positive when they've exhausted, you know, the every other corner. Like I'm waiting. Like we have to, you know, people are going to try. People try and do the easiest things first before they do the most difficult thing. Right. So people are going to try and go on spiritual retreats or do whatever kind of new age thing it is to try and combat the loneliness, and then they'll realize wait a minute, it's just good old fashioned human interaction and being a decent person and listening to people and helping people that actually makes me feel good. So, right. but I think that first humans have to play this, we're, we're an interesting species. We have to do this little dance where we try all the things that won't work before we get right. to the thing that like does Like teenagers. Work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it funny how similar that is? And it, you know, we can point to examples of philosophical cycles, right? Like for example, maybe we're nearing our enlightenment. Right, maybe we're nearing the enlightenment into a new renaissance, mm. but it it's always darkest just before the dawn. Right, most yeah, you know it's funny. Most like prophecies of that sort always say there'll be like the, the, there'll be a great storm or something cataclysmic before it becomes better, and I think that's true with life. I think there to to get better in this world, there has to be something that you're trying to overcome. Mm. And I think up until this point, we haven't been really good at articulating what it is that we're trying to overcome because it's not so obvious anymore. Like in earlier times, the, right. the thing you were trying to overcome was not starving to death. And that's a really, that's a really important mission. Not starving right. to death is a, 
really, really awesome quest to go on. Like, hey, I'm going to wake up, and if I don't work, I'm going to starve. That just gives us a grounding and a sense of purpose. Right. This is the first time in humanity that I'm only talking about the United States. You know, I'm not, obviously, there's other areas of, of the course. world where, you know, survival and food is still an issue. But at least in, you know, the developed world, we're at a point where, you know, most of us are going to get fed one way or another. Mm -hmm. You know, it may not be high quality food or organic or whatever, but, you know, we will eat. And I think that we're now at a point where we need a sense of purpose. And I think that this suffering, this like existential dread and this separation that we have from one another, we have to go through it first before we, we can find what it is that makes us happy and what, what it is that brings our life meaning.